Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching. Uh, welcome to the All Brand Show. If you're new here, my name is Callie and this is the All Brand Show studio over here at our corporate office in Baton Rouge. Thank you so very much for watching today. We have a fantastic show for you. If you joined us last week, then you may remember that we had Carrie Cunningham on the show and she was showing us how to make a kimono duster, but we didn't get finished with it just yet. So today is going to be a part two of that. The last time, uh, if you just need a little refresher, we left off with um, sewing up the shoulders and now we just have to set in the sleeves, put in the band, finish it up. So it's going to be another little chatty hangout. So please let us know where you're watching from and make sure that you stay all the way until the end because we will be giving away a $100 All Brands gift card at the end of the broadcast as per usual. So make sure that you like this video, you leave us a comment, go ahead and share this video if you're watching on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube and go ahead and click that bell as well. Uh, all of those things will get you entered into the giveaway and you can click that bell and get notifications every time we go live and post awesome new content for you, which we are working on behind the scenes. So let's say hello to some folks in the chat. We've got a uh, hi from Round Rock, Texas. I was just over there a couple weeks ago. I love that place. Thank you so much for watching. Stephen Norma Kaufman, hello from San Marcos. Hello, everybody. Barbara Jones, what's up, Barbara Jones? Great to see you as always. Troy and Janine Gibby, uh, hello from Virginia. Patty Phillips, hello, hello from Aurora, Illinois. Ooh, mixing up my words today. Uh, June from Sweeney, Texas. Hello, June. Thank you so much for watching. And Candace from Texas. I love Carrie's style. Me too. <laughs> so let's see. We've got some more folks over here in the chat. Pam from Upper Michigan. Hello, Pam. I hope you enjoy the show today. Havana Canso from Connecticut. Fantastic. So good to see all of you. Patricia Ching from Honolulu. Hello, Patricia. Thank you all so very much for tuning in to the show today. So I'm going to stop blabbing and we are going to bring Carrie on and let's finish up this duster together. Uh, let's go see what Carrie's up to. Hey, Carrie. Hey, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing today, Carrie? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well. It's warm over here. It's a little rainy, you know, but yeah. that's par for the yeah. course down here. <laughs> we kind of have the same this week. A little bit of rain, yeah. a lot of heat. <laughs> it's par for the course, you know, just it waiting is. for it to break down a little summer. bit. <laughs> summer, it's still summer. Yeah. So we left off on the duster. Uh, I believe we sewed up those shoulder seams and the side seams yes. the last time. Okay. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. And correct me if I'm wrong, but now we just have to add these sleeves and the band and finish everything up and then we're done, yeah, right? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, let's just get straight into it. I'll let you um, I'll let you go ahead and take over. And if you have any questions for Carrie, please go ahead and drop them in the chat and we'll try and answer those live. And also take a look at our category page. We have some stuff, some supplies for you. If this is a project that you would like to do at home, we have some similar products to what Carrie's using, uh, particularly the pattern little different, but just as awesome. Very cute. So let's get into it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to switch cameras because I'm going right to the table. Give me just a second. Okay. Okay, there we are. Okay. So what we have, what I have on the table here is the pattern for the sleeve. It's laying on top of the duster. And you can see the cap here, or the head, the head of the sleeve here. It's not as high as a set-in sleeve. This can be either set in, which we're doing today, or it can be put in flat, meaning you have not sewn the side seams yet. You would pull the shoulder seam, knot the side seams, lay the sand, and sew it flat, uh, which I intended to do. But we started talking about pockets, and I sewed up those side seams. <laughs> but that's OK. So one sleeve is already in, and it should look like this when you're done. Uh, let me get 
that in the right place. Um, not sure if you can see it here. Oh, well, that helps, huh? Move the camera. <laughs> so it should like look like this. This is the cap, and there's the shoulder seam, and then there's the bottom of the sleeve. And as far as hemming, you're going to hem the seam, the sleeve, and the bottom the same way. So remember, I clipped the backside, two clips on the backside of the sleeve pattern. And then two clip, and then one clip on the front. You always want to keep those separate because they do. It would fit differently. You'd be kind of shrugging all day, wondering why your sleeve is off if you sew those in backwards. And you make those same marks on your on your bodice piece on the top part of your garment. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have right sides together, and I'm going to sew the side of the seam. I'm going to do this a little bit different. I'm going to search this first, and then I'm going to I think I can turn this camera around. I think I can. I think I can. Okay, let's not do that. Let's go side down. So I'll switch cameras. Sorry. Oh, Carrie, we're a little upside down. <laughs> I know. We don't want to be upside down. It doesn't want to switch. Well, while we're here, that fabric is absolutely gorgeous. It's so pretty. <laughs> it I know we were talking about it last week, but it is so pretty. Okay, it doesn't really want to switch, but let's see if we can use this camera. We got plenty of people sounding off in the chat saying hello. If you're just joining us, thank you so much for coming. This is part two of the kimono duster that we did last week, and I'm really excited about it. My main sewing camera doesn't want to cooperate. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and sew it. Um, you don't really need to sew, see me sewing straight through this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to sew it and then I'll come back and show it to you. Perfect. Perfect. So you're sewing up the, uh, oh, we lost Carrie. Oh, no. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Patty, how to sew upside down. I'm learning. I'm definitely learning how to sew upside down today for sure. Um, let's see who else we've got signing off in the, or signing on joining us in the chat today we got debbie from ohio thank you so much for watching today debbie beverly from sunny southern california oh my gosh i am so jealous of the weather over there probably whatever it's like uh we've got shirley from iowa canning tomatoes Ooh, that sounds kind of like super fun i i want to do that i want to start canning um total tangent there but patricia from oklahoma thank you so much for joining us today um who else do we have in the chat today? We got Joe Pittman Daigle from Thibodeau. Good to see you again, as always. Um, oh, we do have a question. So uh, Joe is wondering, are sergers easy to use? Um, I think that's kind of subjective. Um, I think there's a bit of a learning curve. There, there is a there is a tad bit of a learning curve when it comes to um, surging. Uh, there's something particularly intimidating, I think, to new folks about threading a serger. Uh, I, I mean, I'm speaking from personal experience when I say that when I first got my first serger, it took me so long to get it out of the box and get started because it is, I mean, you're working with four different threads. There are a lot of moving parts. There's so many things that could go wrong. Um, but I think that once you get a little bit more comfortable with just threading it and letting it go and then diagnosing issues as they come about, because inevitably they will, it gets so much easier. And I know I said this last week, if you joined us last week, but surging is such a step up in your garment sewing game. If that is something that you are looking to do, it is truly so awesome to do. Um, you know, you flip open the seams and people are like, Ooh, oh wait, I think Carrie's back. So let's bring her in. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, so as far as the learning, the learning curve on your surgeries, what I suggest and what I've done with my last two surgeries, this is the second one. I had one many, many years, and then I had a different brand, and then I took to Juki, so this Juki actually. And so what I did with both of those surgeries was I got the manual out, and I know we hate them. We hate looking at them, but I went through every yeah. single page, and I stitched every single stitch, every single stitch, and I've kept it all for quite a while on like little scrap pieces and I kept them and I labeled them and because that manual tells you about settings. Like I said, the nice thing about this Juki is that I rarely change my tension setting. It's rare. It has to be something really heavy to make me change it. Even even switching between knits and, and uh, woven. This is a woven. On knit, uh, this is set my differential feed is set to normal and to normal. But when I use a knit, I usually kind of start at one and a half, and then you always test, and um, and that works. And I still, at that point, haven't changed my attention setting. So that's one of the things. The other nice thing about this machine is that it's an air threader. The air threading is so useful. Yes, and if you haven't seen that in action. <laughs> Oh, it's something else. It's, it's really the awesome. It's to buy because we don't have to do all those gyrations and trying to thread it and making sure it's in the, the upper looper is in the upper looper. Right. And, you Taking know, some tweezers in there and like yeah. getting a flashlight in there. Like, what am I doing? And I heard someone say, I'm going to show you this once I'm done. Sorry about the camera. Oh. Um, I heard someone say that, um, what was it they said? Oh, that you have to thread the loopers in order. On this UP, you did not. You can thread them one at a time. You can thread them both at the same wow. time. It doesn't matter. And this uh, this searcher that Carrie's talking about is the MO1000 from Juki. We do have that on our category page uh, for this show over on our website. It is a workhorse. It is a powerhouse. It is a fantastic serger. And I think it's a great one to start with too, because it is, I think it's very user-friendly. I think it's incredibly user-friendly, which is awesome. Yeah, for a long time, I, I couldn't make, I couldn't get a good uh, roll hem off of this machine. And you know, I love to do roll hem. You know, so you know I love to do roll hem. But when I went back and looked at the manual, it was new to me. When I went back and looked at the manual, I had four threads instead of three. So for a long time, I put a little note on the machine and like, roll him three thread. And that was all I needed to do to get a nice roll him. That's it? <laughs> okay. That's it. Okay, so here we have, what I did, I did it a little backwards, but it worked for me. I searched the edges first. So I pulled the side seam of this sleeve up with the serger, and then I went back and stitched it. And the reason I went back and stitched it is because I have this machine set up for three threads. If I had a four thread, I wouldn't need it to go back to the sewing machine. But I've been using three threads pretty much all along for this. So that's what I did there. And let me see if I can get the table camera to cooperate. I'm going to give it a minute. Not sure what's happening. Seems like you're frozen, I think. Yeah, when I did my test, it was fine. Oh. The magic of live television. I did one last. Oh, we lost oh. her again. Oh, no. Oh, bummer. Well, let's see what everybody's saying in the chat. I saw some comments about the uh, about surgers and stuff. Let's see. Um, oh, Patty clarified that she was talking about the 1,000 uh later or further down um yeah so we do we did just put in the chat we put in the category page for the show today um just a few things to note oh let's let's bring carrie back in she's here <laughs> yeah what, what, what's happening is on the settings at the bottom mm -hmm. my mute keeps going off and the camera keeps going off weird yeah, it is. So I'm not sure if that's something on your end we can fix. I, I'm not entirely sure. I think we can just control our camera settings. Okay. 
Because it's just turning, it's turning my mute, it's turning my my voice off and my audio off or my video off. Oh. And then when I turn it back on, I get this camera. Yeah. So let me oh, that's see if funny. I'm the other cameras now. It's a weird thing. That is the strangest thing. I'm not getting the other cameras at all. Oh, <laughs> we're not getting the other cameras at all. That's true. Well, we apologize for all the technical difficulties, but thank you all for sticking in there with us. This is um, this is going to be a really fun finished product too. Once it's done, um, what I wanted to say. Oh, Carrie's back. <laughs> because, because I went, I went and turned the mute and the cam back off again or back on again. That is so strange. It is very strange. And huh. It seems like I'm wondering if it's because I have to do the video thing again. Okay, there so we go. That camera. That's where I want yeah. to go. So whatever you just did worked great. I know. But um, what I wanted to say to everyone is that we do have a category page uh, and we put it in the chat, but there are a few subtle differences, very slight, uh, between Carrie's pattern and the one that we have on our website. Um, Carrie's pattern is a simplicity pattern. Um, we can go ahead and bring her back in. Carrie's pattern is a simplicity pattern. Ours is a different brand that we get or that we carry, um, but it is a duster. And I think the construction is fairly similar. So definitely check that out. Um, there are a few differences, but I think that you can still use the same methods and techniques that Carrie's been using for these past two weeks. Yeah, it looks like the front of that pattern is the same. It is. The back is yeah. a little different. There but are some pleats if, on the if back. You're brave. You can hack that back. Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. Make and make it what you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the camera went flying. I think. <laughs> yeah, I hit it by mistake. Oh, <laughs> that was me. I I backhanded it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my here's my side seam on my. right there okay so here's the size seam on the sleeve and it's a lot of fabric with all this print going on here's the size seam on my duster so i'm going to pin those together you know i don't like a lot of pins but on sleeves i use pins <laughs> i don't use a ton i'll probably use five maybe four we'll see so i'm turning to the outside so i can see it so I'm, I'm sorry, turning to the inside, looking at the wrong side of everything right now. So I want my notches to match up. So here's my two notches on the back of the garment. I'll match those up with the sleeve. And oops, on the side. And then here's my two notch, my one notch on the front of the garment. So I'll match that up. If you can see me. And then you can see that this sleeve fits in this garment almost perfectly because it doesn't have that high cap. So I'm going to pin the shoulder, match the shoulder seam to the shoulder of the sleeve. And then I'm going to bring it to the sewing machine this time, not the serger. <laughs> if this was a knit, I'd be taking it to the serger, but it's not. So I can't do what I did with the, um, with the sleeve, with the side of the sleeve. I can't do that. I could, but it's not a good idea. Okay, so that's everything pinned. You can see there. And I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. And I'm gonna try and get the camera to work. Now, I don't know about y'all, um, but I have the biggest fear of setting sleeves. 
<laughs> I am so bad at it. Um, and it comes with practice, right? It, it, it is one of those things that comes with uh, with practice, but it is a little intimidating, especially when sleeves do have that really high cap and you're sitting there like, all right, let's make sure all these puzzle pieces fit together. Um, and Carrie is very brave, I think, for only <laughs> using two pins on this, I think, for sure. Um, Let's see what do we have. Uh, so Deborah has a question. Uh, Deborah is wondering, why can't you go to surgery? Why isn't it a good idea with this fabric? Oh, you can. Oh, Deborah, you can. Um, Carrie just did it a little out of order. So she uh, uh, surged the edges and then sewed it up right after. Um, or did I get that right? I think so. Um, I believe that's what she, she just did. Um, it's a fine idea, I think, with this kind of fabric. I believe when we talked about it last week, Carrie mentioned that it was a polyester rayon fabric that she's working with. Um, so it is still perfectly fine for, for searching. Um, now, depending on your machine, you're going to have to probably adjust your tension test just to make sure that there's nothing funky going on. Um, but generally, I think it, it should be all right. It's very It's a very forgiving <laughs> fabric, I think. For sure. Um, do we have any other questions in the chat while we were uh, while we're, we're, we're waiting? Um, oh well, hi Beth. Thank you so much for tuning into the show today. Um, something that I did want to point out to you guys is that if you are uh, if you are just tuning in and you're a little late, or if you haven't watched last week's, because this is a direct sequel to last week's. If you haven't watched that one, you can go ahead and watch it either on our Facebook or on our YouTube channel. They are both available. Um, we have an all brand show YouTube playlist. So you can go in and watch every single episode that we've done, I believe, since the start of the pandemic. Um, it's it's about 90 or something episodes. We're almost to 100 episodes of the all brand show, which is super exciting. Um, and they are on um, they're all on Facebook as well. So if you want to just go back through our old videos, it is there as well. Um, and yes, Troy, it is a great fabric for surging. Um, honestly, once I got a serger, I really didn't look back. Um, I, I think it's really fantastic. And it, it's especially the MO1000. It is a really incredible serger. It's very versatile. There are a lot of different things that you can do with it, which I love personally. Um, and if you haven't looked into getting a serger, definitely check it out. It's over on our category page. It is just so perfect for so many different kinds of fabrics. And I think that it is pretty easy to learn despite there being a bit of a curve, um, just like with any new bit or sewing gadget or anything there is a bit of a learning curve to that but i think that the payoff is really really serious uh everything just looks so professional which is awesome and i think that's so fantastic um joe was wondering can you serge any type of fabric so it depends um there are some things that i probably wouldn't or that you wouldn't necessarily need to if that makes sense um I'm, I'm trying to think of the right the right way to describe it. When Carrie comes back, I think we can talk about it a little bit more in detail. Um, but I would honestly say that there are probably more fabrics that you should and can surge than you can't or that you probably don't have to. And Carrie's back, so let's bring her in. I have no idea. I just kept clicking audio and video until <laughs> I came back. <laughs> okay, so I like to... Looks like I might get a little bit of view of the. Nope, I won't. <laughs> let me turn my. Let me turn this around for you. Carrie, I love your shirt. Did you make it? I did. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kelly, I can't tell where the. Oh, there's the sewing machine. Um, yeah, just if it's a little bit uh, to your. Yeah, this is the camera that's not working. Oh, okay. So it's not cooperating at all. So that would have been that camera. Um, okay, I'm going to put it Perfect. right there. <laughs> That's great. Okay, because I really do want them to see me sew this sleeve in. So I'm going to sew this sleeve in with the sleeve side down because that's where the bulk is. And that will give you, um, it'll kind of help to balance out the fabric. So the body of the garment is smaller than the sleeve, even though this is a kind of lay-in sleeve. Give me a second here. Right, 
put it on the machine. I get it started. And I like this to start from the underarm. Just so I know where I am. <laughs> where everyone is. All right, try to put this out of your way. I'm really sorry about the cameras. I'm not sure what's happening. So you could, somebody asked a question about serging the sleeve first. Um, on a woven fabric, I really don't suggest it because, like I said, one side is the sleeve is small, is larger than the body. Um, but if it's a knit, you can do it and give little stretches as you go. You have a little bit of give in, in the woven fabric too because if you think about it, the way the sleeve is cut those curves are actually on the bias. So you'll see me tug a little bit in some places. So where these notches are from the underarm seam to the notches, I don't want to, I don't want to pull that. I don't want to tug at all. And I did use five pins. <laughs> you can use them more if you need to. Now give me a second here. Okay, I'm gonna stop for a second. I made a little bit of a mistake. I'm gonna fix that. Take this whole thing apart. And mistakes do happen. Not just camera. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay, they're watching me, but they can't hear me. Okay, I had to take that whole thing out. I'm just going to put my pants back in now. So when I press this, I press the side thing. In this case, to the front. Normally, we press our seams to the back, but they're pressed to the front because we have pockets, and the pockets go to the front. And sometimes the pattern directions don't tell you. I don't believe this one does either. But um, you definitely want to press them to the front because you want your pockets to go to the front. And I'll show you when I get the sleeve on how nice it. It laid down because I did press everything. I'm not pressing here in the show, but I did get everything pressed. Okay, I am almost there. Okay, all right. Okay, now I'm ready to start over. <laughs> And again, I'm going to sew with the sleeve side down. Even though, even if you do something on the serger uh, and making it like 99% on the serger, you still want to sew with that sleeve side down. And maybe even sew with your pin so you can see the pin head. I'm, passing, I'm just passing the first notch. I'm passing the back notches. And now I want to kind of gauge where that pin is on the shoulder seam and see how much I have to pull it. And I don't know if you can see, but I have to pull it just a little bit, which I'm always excited about. Because if you pull too much or you get in a situation where you have to pull too much, you end up with puckers on your shoulder or pucker somewhere. You don't want puckers. That's the big part of this. So now I'm at the next notch. So, Perry, we've got a question from Candice over on YouTube. She's asking, could you use a rolled hem on the sleeve edges instead of hemming? Yes. Definitely. And if you have a knit fabric and you want to use a roll hem, if you pull it just a little bit, you get a scallop edge. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that is very true. And those are really pretty. They are. 
yeah, you can do a, you can do a roll hem, you can do a narrow hem, you can do a wider hem. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to hem this. I'm just going to show you kind of the, the bottom of it so you can see what it's all looking like. Um, but yeah, you can decide what you want to do with your hem on the sleeve yeah. and the bottom. Yeah. And the bottom. You've got a lot, a lot of options. Yeah. You can put trim on it. I've done some with bands or with the uh, bias binding all the way around the sleeve and all the way around the, the garment itself. So my bottom looks just like my side. Okay, so I'm with the other side of the garment now, going in the front. And I can see I have almost no tugging to do. There's my pin, it's lining up perfectly with my pin, which means once I get to the end, I should have zero cover. And this is why I prefer to do wovens on the sewing machine first before I serve them because I can control and make sure I don't get puckers. If you're doing a service, sometimes you can see it and you end up with puckers and ask me how I know. <laughs> I got my scissors. Okay, so here's our sleeve. Completely done. And I'll put in these scissors. I'm sorry, I can't really see it. <laughs> I hate when you test things and they're perfect and then you try to work with them. They're not so perfect. We have issues. camera that's not cooperating is actually my best camera. I guess I need a new best camera. Should have done before we started it. But anyway, I didn't have puckers. So here's the shoulder. And that's usually where your puckers land. But there it is with no puckering. There it is. No puckering. So when you press this, it's going to be beautifully flat. And this part of it, if you have a ham, I would use the ham to press the shoulder down. Some people don't press this, and you can tell they haven't pressed it. But you need to press everything. Oh, I love my, I love my tailoring ham. It's so perfect for that. Oh, isn't it nice? It's so great. It's perfect for that. It's perfect for uh, princess seams too. Yeah. It's perfect for anything that's curved, even shoulder seams, short seams. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I'll use it because I don't like seams on my shoulder or whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. It's good for hoods yeah. too, like yeah, on like you're making a hood. Garment here. <laughs> oh my gosh, that happened quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can get my chair wheel off of it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's my band. And what I did was I added interfacing to give it some body. And then I folded it in half. I forgot all the interfacing and I folded it in half and pressed it. But I want to show you the inside here. See where my interfacing doesn't quite come to the end? I'm just shy of the end of, of each side of it. Let me open it up. I did that intentionally because I don't want to ruin my iron, <laughs> nor my ironing board cover. 
So I tend to make my interfacing just like about an eighth of an inch shy of the width of whatever I'm doing, especially when I'm doing something narrow like this. And then when I sew it, all of that excess will get caught up in the seam. So I need to find a halfway point on this. Let me do that. Ah, I don't have to. I don't have to look for it because I forgot. I put a pen in it so I can remember where it was. Okay, that's my halfway point. So this is like a facing, essentially, Carrie, right? It's like a what? Is this like a facing? Yes, yeah, but it's going to come out. Oh, perfect. Like okay. Versus hiding inside. Oh, it's I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be on the outside. And uh, C. Morelli brought up something really good uh, in the chat over on YouTube. Um, yes, you do need to be careful of your iron settings. If the iron is too hot on something like rayon, you will get a little bit of burn. It looks really shiny. Um, and it, you yeah. can tell it's kind of throwing things off just a little bit. So be careful of that if you do end up doing this and using a, a rayon fabric or polyester rayon. Yeah, and you can get shine on other fabrics too. Like soothing and that wool, you yeah. can put shine on velvet. You can ruin totally. Right. Um, but but the uh, solution for that is to use a cover. Definitely. Yeah. Use some, and I usually use cotton on almost everything. A piece of cotton fabric is what I use. I don't buy anything fancy. <laughs> okay, so I found the uh, had the center of the neckline of the garment and the center of the band. And the band's going on the right side. So there it is, pinned right side to right side. Here's my tip for these bands. Don't start at one end and work your way all the way to the other end. Start at your center point and go to one end and then come back from your angle to your center point and go to the other end. And the reason for that is in most cases, this fabric will shift. It doesn't matter what fabric it is, it will shift. Ask me how I know, it will shift. And what you'll have is your seam or your neck band won't match up with the center of your garment. So I'm gonna start just on the other side of this pen. And sew this up. And I'm going to go down one side and then we're going to come back and go down the other side. Oh, well, this is where you could have done surgery first, surgery last, doesn't matter. And even if you do surgery, look, surgery first, you still want to start at that center point and go to one side and then come back and do the other side. Because I tend to put labels and things and I hate it when my label doesn't line up. My label didn't line up because my band shifted. And I'll take the whole thing apart. <laughs> Don't be afraid of using those seam rippers. So, Callie, on this serger, too, we talked about a little bit about the air threading, but it also has needles. It also does thread the needle, or, ne or also has a needle threader. So yeah, that is, that is yeah. indispensable. <laughs> Right, you can ship it to the left for the left needle and ship it to the right for the right. That's perfect. And you know, you brought up a good point. Do not be afraid to use your seam ripper. I, there is no shame in goofing no. something up the first time. And honestly, I think that it, it kind of took me a while the to come is, to terms. The shame is when you messed it up and you wore it anyway. Yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, it takes a while to come to terms with that. Like, it, I tell my students, do. Do you want them to say, oh, you made that? Or do you want them to say, you made that? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Pick, pick one. Which one do you want? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I, you know, I'm thinking of all of the projects that I finished, you know, 
back when I first started sewing, I've still got them in my closet because I like looking at them, you know, every now and again just to see how I made out. And uh, yeah, they are not the prettiest at all. I don't know what I was thinking going out wearing those, but uh, <laughs> we learn from our mistakes for sure. We do, because I have a garment here that I put the sleeves in on backwards. Oh, and yeah. I haven't fixed it. And then every now and then I forget about it. I forget that that's the problem. Right. And I put it on. <laughs> sleeves are sitting so wonky. <laughs> and you're like, this feels weird. What is going on? Now I don't have time to fix this. So this oh, morning, yeah. I was, actually, this morning I was looking at it and I thought, I think at this point, because it's been a couple of years, I think at this point, but when I first made it, I gained weight and I couldn't wear it. Uh, or I wasn't comfortable wearing it. So, so it kind of sat in the closet and took the bag. And when I finally pulled it out, I was like, oh, I forgot about this sleeve issue. <laughs> but now I'm thinking that because the front is, is a solid, lightweight denim, or the back is, and the front is a panel fabric. Oh. So I think I'm going to take it apart and use that panel for something else. It's time. <laughs> it's time. It is time. It is time. See, Merle, you're right. There is no such thing as a mistake. They are all learning experiences. You know, when yeah, Bob well, Ross said, oh, well, "You mess it up, just give it to someone," I'm like, "No, I don't give mess yeah. up to people." <laughs> right? When Bob Ross said, "There are no mistakes, only happy accidents," I I really felt that. That is something yeah. I I keep I I hold that very very near and dear and close to my heart because it is true. And it's all an experience. I mean, anytime, you know, you're going to see the issues in your garment, I think, before anybody else does. Like the little things, yeah. you're like, oh, this seam didn't match up quite right. Yeah, or we know, we know what we did. <laughs> you know, we're our, we're our own worst critics. So I think that you do yeah, kind yeah. of, you know, you'll you'll see those little mistakes before everybody else does. But every every single thing you make, I think, is just another step in your kind of journey. Oh, definitely. So I'm back at the center point on the other side, and that really is a, um, a really good way to make sure your band doesn't shift on you. Yeah. Now, Carrie, would you consider this fabric kind of slippery? It is. It's not crazy slippery, but a little bit. How how do you do how do you deal with cutting out slippery fabrics? Because that I think is the most frustrating thing. One of the most frustrating experiences for me. Tie to rated scissors. Yes. To hold that fabric in place. And we do have these on our category and page. Then, so. And then uh, paper or fabric weight. Yes. The other way. And if it's super, super slippery, you can put um, tissue paper under it. Oh. It, it will hold it in place. You know, I had not considered that before. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. That, that's for cutting, but you can also do that for sewing if you have to. Right. Oh, yeah, that's it true. It's very nicely. It's, so it's a wrapping paper that we use for mm -hmm. wrapping gifts. Nothing heavier than that. Yeah. But yeah, you, if you try other papers, they don't hold the fabric on your table. But if you put right. the paper under there, it will. Oh, that's great. Oh. You know, and speaking of wrapping paper, I think that's one of my favorite things to uh, to put patterns on is wrapping paper. Yeah, and one of my friends consistently waits until the after Christmas sale. Oh yes. And goes to Hobby Lobby and buys all the wrapping paper they have left. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Paper. Yeah. It's, easy. it's so perfect. You know, especially especially if you have. Um, if you, especially if you have the wrapping paper with the one inch grid on the back, that is awesome for pattern drafting. If that's something you're comfortable with doing. Yeah. You know, I was talking about adding bands to patterns that maybe doesn't have a band. I like my, my patterns, my bands to be about two inches wide. So this one is it's two inches unfinished. And when it's finished, it's going to be about, um, one and three quarters or a little bit more than that. Mm. But less than that is gonna be kind of it won't look nice. It won't look as nice. It won't so look got, as expensive. We've got a question um, from Patricia over on Facebook. Patricia's wondering was the length of your stitch addressed? Like what uh what length are you using for your stitches right oh, now? Oh we need to talk about it. It's a uh, two point four. 
There you go. <laughs> yeah, I think we did talk about that. Four, they might have two point five or two point six both are fine. Right. Yeah, we did talk about that last week. But if you are if you are just joining us, um, that's generally what what Carrie's working with on this project. Yeah. And honestly, this project is so quick. This one is fast. It's, it's, it's very quick. And my uh, the needle I'm using is an eighty to eighty twelve. And I always use Smith. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Microtex. Yes. Yeah, I love Microtech needles. Their Microtech needles are really fantastic. Um, if you haven't watched them, for everybody at home, we do have a few uh, videos with Rhonda Pierce from Spets, who is the needle expert in my in my humble opinion. Um, she is an absolute wealth of needle knowledge. And if you want, if you have any questions about needles, I think she, I think it's safe to say she's probably answered your question in uh, in either. Uh, of those you can videos. get one of these. Yes. This is a nice little guide. All things needles. So useful. It's a really nice guide. Because I think your needle is pretty overlooked, I think, when it comes to your project. Yeah. Um, that's really kind of an afterthought for a lot of us. I think I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> yeah, so I run a, a sewing ministry for uh, making dresses for little girls for Africa. And when we met last week, or a couple weeks ago we met, I was walking through the classroom or through the area, and I heard this clunk, 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 and I'm like, whose machine is that? <laughs> and, the lady raised, and the lady raised her hand, I'm like, change your needle. And I said it like that because like, we talked about these needles before. And I have a, and I bought needles for them, so they can get needles from me. They don't have to run home or wait till they get home. And I said, please change your needle. Change your needle, the sound was gone. Yeah, save your machine the trouble for sure. Yeah, the needle was completely worn out. It was done. Oh, wow. And she thought that sound was normal. I'm like, it's not normal. Oh, that's not normal. Oh, no. Because she's been hearing it for a while, she said. Oh, no. And she, she thought it needed to. She thought either it was normal or it needed to be serviced. Right. So look at the bottom here. So this oh, is the side, wow. and this is the band hanging off the bottom. I tend to make my bands longer because as you sew sometimes you'll lose the length in the band. So I don't make it exact. I'd rather cut this off later. So it's about, I don't know, maybe three or four inches. I usually don't go that far, but this time I did. Not intentionally, but I but I did go over. So each side looks like that. So you can see that extra band hanging off right there. So now I can cut that bit of foam. And look at that. We're almost there. Yeah. We basically are there. Yeah. Oh, that looks awesome already. Yeah. Shoulder seam. It's done. It's so pretty. It needs to be pressed. Press those seams. Press this seam to the inside. I mean, I would serve, I would serve it. I'm going to serge it. Um, and then we just press it. And then as far as the hem, let's pretend that it's already served. So I'll go down here and cut this piece off for you. My excess band off. Because now I feel comfortable cutting it off. So that's off. So you have choices here. You can, you can um, roll hem this. Just have to be careful that the band gets that roll of hem in there. Um, you can um, narrow hem this where you turn it up, uh, I'd say a quarter and a quarter, and stitch that down. If you do that, I would do a longer stitch, maybe a 3.0, because it's a top stitch that people will see, and you will kind of want it to look a little decorative versus utilitarian. So give it a, like a 3.0. I wouldn't go higher than 3.5, because then you get into a year. It's just stretching a little bit. So you can do that. That's the narrow hem. You can, if you want some weight on your garment, you can turn it up more. So yeah. let's see. I turn this, and I tend, like on this lightly fabric, I want a little bit of weight on it, but not a lot. Oh, sure. So this is about an inch. Pretend it serves. Turn up the inch and just stitch it down or turn it again. 
Uh -huh. If you turn it the second time, you want to make sure this little piece here is not sticking out. You see that a lot in ready, ready, wear, ready to wear garments. You see this sticking out. You can either cut that or just turn it in. Yep, tuck it in just a little bit. And now it's gone. So you, when you turn it, you want to turn it all the way to that one inch mark. So when you sew it, you'll be stitching on top of it. And it'll stay in. And that thicker hem just gives you a little bit more weight at the bottom, mm -hmm. a little bit less yeah, flowy. And that's why I, that's why I interface uh, the band. Yeah. The on the band. I didn't want a lot. It's just, I used that um, French pew, so I didn't get a lot, but the starting is done. That's it. The same thing, the same thing with the sleeve, just decide how you want to hem it. Right. You can turn it up, you can roll edge it, roll, yeah, roll hem. Um, you can do the narrow hem, you can do the wider hem. If you want, you can add interfacing and roll it up and give you some weight uh -huh. there. Or you can add an edge or own band to it. This pattern is not oh, but you can put a band on it. But it's done. And that's it. Yeah. That's so exciting. Let me put it on. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right, so there we are. We'll pretend it's already pressed. It looks so good. Oh my God. Yeah. Here's our sleeve. If you want that longer, you could have made it longer. You could add a band and make it longer. Definitely. You can make it shorter if you want it shorter. Yeah, like a little I short. I can't put like a lot of my sleeves here, but for this, I would leave it. Just get the yeah. flow going everywhere. Right. <laughs> Just let it flow. Oh, that looks so comfortable and so pretty. Oh, yeah. And you can make a belt. But remember, oh, I need all of this fabric. There is no belt. Right. <laughs> if, if you, you got straps, you can over. Yeah. So you can wear it over a dress. You can wear it over your jeans. You can wear it over your leggings. You can. Yeah. Know, and that's it. that's almost something that you could even add, like, belt loops to if you wanted to make a belt. Yes. Yeah. You, know, you have I, you've got a wealth of like options on how to finish this. Right, and, I, and you can I do know outside that. pockets. They didn't they didn't have to be inside pockets. Right, it's whatever you want. But here's our pocket. Yeah, some like if you wanted to do um, like some funky like top stitched uh, pockets that would on the front. I think that yeah. would also be awesome. Yeah. And if you're doing a knit that's a little heavy, you probably do want to top stitch this pocket down. Right. Down. You do want to pop this down. So just kind of mark it so you get a nice, mm -hmm. even curve there. And just right. Pop this down. And you know the way the way I see it, um, and I think it's just because I am comfortable with with garment sewing. Like quilting is kind of where I'm a bit more. Um, branching out, I guess. Uh, the way that I see paper patterns is that they're like guidelines. So, you know, if there's something about oh, the yeah. finished product that you just are like, I'm not feeling this at all, find a way to fix it. Find a way, you can find a way to make it something that you know that you will wear, that you like. And I think that that's something that's really incredible about garment sewing. Um, yeah. The, I mean, that's just something amazing about sewing in general is that you just have so many options and that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone is sounding off in the chat. They love it. Um, oh, that is a great idea. Those fancy frog closures. That would be fantastic as well on the front. Yeah. That would look gorgeous. Oh, yeah. You can do so many things. You yeah. have so many options. Um, the neck, yeah, the neck lays really nice. You just have to make sure you get a nice cut on your shoulder, on your um, neckline. Yeah. And then put it, just put it on there. And if you don't, if you're uncomfortable or this is too much, turn it down. Turn it down. Yeah. You can do that. <laughs> you yeah, I did that on one of them, on the purple one. I did that. Oh, one. yeah. But again, this is about two inches. I love this little tool. So this. Is, let me see exactly what it is. It is one and three quarters. Perfect. Or two, I'm sorry. Yeah, one and three quarters. So close to two inches. Like I said, I wouldn't go over two because then the band would be too big. Right. Unless unless you want to. You can. You totally could. <laughs> I think you know what you're aiming for. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. 
<laughs> and especially with something like this, I think this is a really good pattern if you wanted to change it up a little bit, but you weren't quite sure where to start. I think this would be a good place to do it because when you think about it, the band is just one long rectangle anyway. So you could make that as wide as yeah, you want. Red, all yeah. red, all green, all long. Contrasting all fabrics. Red. Um, yeah. Even, you know, if you wanted to, this could be something that, say, if you have um, something like the XP2 or XP1, if you wanted to do like a decorative stitch uh, on that mm -hmm. band, that's something you could do as well, just to make it your own. There are a ton of decorative stitches on those machines, so you could find something. You could definitely find something. And, and you could, the other thing you could do, and I, I haven't done that, but I have a piece of fabric that I think I might do that way. You could do a solid. I have no solid dusters, believe it or not. <laughs> so you could do a solid and it grows the back of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could do a lot of different things. I mean, you could even do embroidered front pockets. I don't know. I mean, right. the it's world is your sell. oyster when it comes to stuff like this, which I think is so cool. That is why we sew. I guarantee you, if you handed two people, different people, My daughter sometimes asks me, why did you make that? I said, because I can. Because I, like I can. Because I wanted to. <laughs> I, 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 I have to say her, I just made her dust the last week, and I took it to her. Uh, as a surprise birthday gift. And she did a video. Some of you might have seen it. Um, because I recognize her name too. But she did a video on her <laughs> it's funny. Her the background is like all messy and she's got stuff and <laughs> she got it. She's setting up a new craft room so you can see part of that. But she's twirling around in this thing going, Mama, Mama, did your mama really thank you, Mama? It's so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. And I didn't play with that fabric because it was a, it was a border. A floral border, big border, and then it was striped. So what I did was I turned the fabric and I put the floral on the side that also ran across the bottom on one side, and on the other side she has all stripes. And then her sleeves are the floral and the bands are the stripes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a fun one. I love I'm that. Do a lot of that. I'm ready to go. You know, for the last two weeks, I've gotten this like bee in my bonnet to to do one of these, but I want to do like a solid linen. Um, if I can yeah. find some linen, I'd love to do something like that. Like I love that sort of mustardy yellow. In fact, like the color we've got or I've got behind yeah. me, um, that kind of color. I would love to do something like that or even even just like a black linen, something. Um, it's very warm down here. So something moisture wicking <laughs> would be incredibly useful. I think, especially with all this humidity, that would be fantastic. So I am, I am inspired. That light, that light, that linen would flow as well. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm just inspired you right definitely now. You want the movement when you're moving. You want it to move. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or, you know, even I, I think that this might even look good depending on, you know, your fabric choice and everything. You can even do like some fringe at the bottom, depending on how long or short it is. Anything like that. The world is your oyster. Go out and make a duster. You have so many options. <laughs> you just made a rhyme. Your little right? boy. Right? <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Um, Carrie, this has been so awesome. Thank you so very much for coming back on the show today and finishing this up with us. Um, let's go ahead and give away that $100 All Brands gift card. So if you haven't yet, get your comments in, get your likes in, get your shares in. We're going to give that away in just a moment. Um, I'll let everybody, I'll give everybody another few seconds to, to get that in. We'll pick our winner. Um, but I think I know what I'm doing after work today. And I think that is making a duster. Um, <laughs> I have plans now. Tell, tell us how long it take you. Oh what yeah. We'll find out. We'll find out. I don't know. I'm a little, I'm, I, I can get, it's a little challenging for me sometimes on my own. It's funny because I'm coming out another one tomorrow. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's gotta be, I mean, that's such a useful I'm wearing, I'm wearing this probably Sunday. I'll probably wear this Sunday. I don't there you know. Go. I have a doctor's appointment on Friday. Maybe I'll wear it Friday. There we go. We're going to the doctor tomorrow in our duster. <laughs> like my doctor is a little jazzy lady, so I might jazz up for her. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and pick that winner for our $100 All Brands gift card. Um, we have a name. We're going to be pulling a random name. So let's get a little drum roll going. And we will pull up that winner on our screen. 
Patricia. Patricia. Congratulations, Patricia Ching. You have won a $100 All Brands e-gift card. So if you would, Patricia, please email events at allbrands.com and send us your name, your email or your address, I'm sorry, and your phone number, and we will get that e-gift card out to you. You can totally buy the pattern for that other duster we've got on our website. Get yourself some scissors, you know. Um, you're in the market for a serger. We do have carries, so just you know, the world the world is also your oyster. That's my that's my motto for today. That, that's my slogan. Um, but this yeah, has been Patricia. Patricia's in my group, and we're actually in a couple other groups together. Oh, awesome! We're some of the same group. So well, thank you for yeah. watching the show today, it's Patricia. Really Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, this has been such a fun little project and it did not take long at all. Yeah. You can watch this whole video from start, or the, the, the two videos we did from start to finish. Yeah, they're two hours, but that's also a lot of us chatting. So I yeah. think that if you were alone, you could do this so quickly, like just back and forth between either your serger, your machine, or even just zigzagging and your machine. Like it's so easy. It is so, so easy. I cannot recommend it enough. Yeah especially if you're trying to get out of your comfort zone just a little bit and try something a little different, uh, especially if you're a quilter and you want to try garment sewing. I think this is the project for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on I'm that glad note, we I'm glad we did garment. Yes. Oh, it was so fun. Carrie, I cannot wait to have you back on the show again. And you'll be with us at the Houston Quilt Festival. Is that right? Yep, that's the plan. Awesome. That's so guys, plan. we will be back. Uh, along with Rain. Yes, with Rain and, and Rain Cindy Rain. Hogan, Angela Wolf, we will be at the Houston Quilt Festival October 28th through the 31st, both in person and online, which is super exciting. Um, we'll have some folks there in person. I will be online on the digital side doing it just kind of like we did last year, um, keeping things running over on the virtual end. So if you can't make it to Houston, then you can catch us on Facebook. So on that note, I think we are going to sign off for the day. Thank you, Carrie, again for coming on the show. Everybody go home and make a dust awesome. right now. Go Thanks home and make a dust <laughs> And we'll, we'll see you, we will see all of you next Thursday at 3.30 Central for another All Brand show. So thank you all very, very much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you then. Bye everybody. Bye.